we can start. Yeah, I'm starting it up now. Okay. <clears throat> so, the first thing you're going to do is... You're going to be sleeping. Mm-hmm. And in your head, a constantly in flux and changing shadowy aberration is going to appear and he is going to or she or actually it you actually can't tell it again the voice is constantly changing and its shape is constantly changing but it I guess we'll call it is saying that you need to find the man with the gnarled cane Um, am I able to speak back to this man, or entity, I guess I could refer to it as? Yeah, you can try. Let's see what happens. So, I'm probably just rolling around in my bed having a disturbed sleep, and in my dream I'm just going, Who's this man you want me to find? Find the man with the gnarled cane. Mm, but no. Uh, why? He has the answers to the questions you seek. Am I getting paid for this? Uh, you hear several different kinds of, and again, varying from like mean laughter to just funny laughter, but you hear several different peals of laughter all at once. Mm, I definitely should stop drinking. Um, about half of the voices say you should, but half the voices say you should continue drinking. Um, uh, how does this man look like? There's another set of, uh, a ray of peal of laughter, and you wake up. It is now, let's see, so you're a bouncer, so you probably went to bed about the crack of dawn. Yeah. Uh, so then, like, eight hours later from five is, like, 1 p.m., let's say? Yeah, sure, let's roll with 1 p.m. So it's at 1 p.m., and then you have work, uh, tonight at, you know, 8 p.m., but, yeah, so, you're awake. So, yeah, my initial reaction would probably be to just get out uh, uh, of, or sit up in my bed uh, on the edge, kind of like rubbing my eyes going, oh, okay, it's been one of those nights again. Not that this is a, anything y usual for a light show, but uh, bad dreams come and go as they go for him. So I can't imagine the, the bed to be like a bit worn out, so it's kind of creaking beneath his weight as he's sitting on the edge. And then he just gets up in his apartment, uh, or out of his bed, and walks around clothes st stone all over the place from when he was working last night like you see underwear you see shirts pants hanging all over uh, his armor jacket is hanging off of it, the uh, fan in the ceiling as he walks over to his bathroom and kind of just begins washing his face and then just does the normal getting awake preparations like washing himself and all that jazz as he once he's done with that he gets out and hmm uh, he just sits down and stares at the well I don't sure if, yeah he's going to get dressed never mind he needs to get some walking and some fresh Seattle air. Uh, so rainy and dreary. Yeah, so rainy and dreary and full of pollutants. Uh, but yeah, uh, as he is getting out of uh, his apartment, 
uh, he is not going to be bringing his disco stick with him or his uh, uh, sledgehammer, aka the beat, either. Uh, uh, but yeah, he's going to head to a nearby soy box and pick up a soy calf and some, I don't know, soy, soy bagel or soy nut. Soy nut. Makes sense, you know, they're, they're actually half off at this point because it's, you know, afternoon, they're kind of going a bit stale. Mm-hmm. And he's just going to be sitting at some of the tables and just pondering over what the shifting black entity said to him uh, with the varying voices as he's just leaning his head towards the wall. Um, his LED lights, of course the armor jacket is as usual on his back, but his horns, they're kind of faded in this... I'm going to say he did not think of it as first, but he made them be in a, like, a slowly pulsating black uh, as he just instinctively was thinking of the dream. Perhaps there was a different reason to this as well, but that's... Uh, kind of how he's sitting there going and he's thinking about what he asked and uh, this gnarled cane as you're speaking of and he's just sitting and chewing on his soy nut and sipping his soy calf while thinking about what uh, that would mean or if it was just the hurl from when he came home last night gotcha so, does he want to do anything else before he goes to work later tonight? Um, I'm going to call up uh, my fixer, aka my homeboy, Led Zeppelin, and ask for the... Uh, fuck, what's it called? The VIP list uh, for the people tonight. And I'm just going to make a quick search for... Uh, uh, over the tricks, or if there's um, images involved in that, to see if there's any man with an image of a cane. Yep, uh, you don't, you know, a lot of younger people going to the clubs nowadays, uh, you don't really get that. So, yeah, you, you don't really see anyone with a cane specifically in any of their me feet pictures. Fair enough. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm probably just going to be deal a little bit of workout and such before the evening, but yeah, then I just get into my attire and get head to the nightclub. Yep, so, you know, you grumble a little bit at having to work two nights in a row, um, but you go to the nightclub, you earn your keep or whatever, you are anticipatingly watching for anyone walking with a cane, uh, you know... You maybe see one or two with kind of like a bedazzled kind of cane stick. Uh, you, of course, take those off of them because they're not taking that into your nightclub because that's only going to cause an issue. Mm hmm But uh, no gnarled-looking canes. And the night ends, and but the shift ends, and so the sun is rising in the east. <laughs> and you start to walk to your vehicle. Um, or, or to walk home or whatever you do. No, I'm, I'm working, so I'm taking my Shinyu, because cabs and buses, it just makes it a hassle. Yep, so you, you start walking to your Shinyu, and as the sun rises, it casts light upon a tiny little Asian man with a gnarled wooden cane hobbling along past where you're working. Uh, not, you know, he's on the street walking along the sidewalk, walking in the direction past your club, basically, is what's happening. Okay, and this, uh, he's walking outside of the club, he's not, I don't come across him as I'm walking to my car, if I No, you see him off in the, so like, you're in the parking lot of the club, he's walking along the sidewalk past the club, uh, in some direction, you know, looking like he's going somewhere. You know, it's, it's, it's 5 a.m., that's when old people wake up, he's just going to wherever he does first in the day. Yeah, um... I'm going to begin casually... <laughs> as casually as a disco troll can walk around in the streets, um, follow the man, uh, yes, because it's been rubbing on my mind since I had the dream about him, and I'm just going to grid guide my ho car home. Okay, 
Sure thing. So unless you stop him, uh, he's just going to continue walking until he gets to the nearest park. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, it, Light Show knows that call him. It, it, it's probably just a bad dream, but it, it was a very vivid dream, so he still wants to check out what's the deal with this man, because uh, this man probably, yeah, he appeared in his life, like he's in front of him, yo. Yep, so uh, the man's going to walk into a little area of the park. There's going to be two tree stumps. He's going to get into, like, the cross legs position or whatever and put the cane, uh, gnarled cane across his lap and he's going to appear to start meditating. Is but he then, sitting on a tree stump? Yes, he is sitting on one of the two tree stumps. He's sitting on a smaller tree stump. There's a very, like, a, a bigger tree stump next to it. And as you walk up, he's going to say, you might as well sit. As if he knew you were there the entire time because, you know, you're a giant disco troll following him for a couple blocks. He probably noticed you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, three meters tall, it's kind of hard to be sneaky. Three meters tall and glowing with disco lights, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I, I guess I sit down, um, awkwardly try to... Uh, I was about going to say intimidate, but uh, that's not the word I'm looking for. Um... Uh, mimic, thank you, uh, the man. Yep. Uh, it, I think I know the word you're trying to get, but I can't remember it now. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, you try to meditate like the gentleman. Um, it's not working as well for you. Make an ascensing check. Um, I don't think you can default in ascensing. I don't yeah, have it. No, you, you just fail. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I, I, I straight up fail, yo. So he's going to sh shift around, kind of like pivot on his stump, so he's facing you now, still in his meditative position, and he's going to say... Like to your comments, that's some sweet butt gymnastic moves, bro. Since he's, he's sitting, meditating, and spins around. Yep. And he's going to say... What is the name that of that which calls you in the night? Lightshow kind of ponders as he 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 thinks for a second if he's referring to his fixer, his street name, or the bad dream he just had, and he kind of goes, um, Lightshow. Ah, uh, hold on a second. I guess the right word would be calls you in the shadows, I guess, but yeah. So, um, he totally doesn't laugh at that. Um, <laughs> Ouch! Sweet burns, Ome. Yep, yep. Um, well, in real life, that's what would have happened if you just said Light Show was the person. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. You know. You'll know at the end of, like, you probably already know. Um, so, what is going to happen is he's going to turn back around and go back to meditating. Uh, and typically be unresponsive at this point forward. Like, you can tr you try to talk to him a couple times and he doesn't seem to be... He, he, he'll repeat the question, but you can't seem to find an answer. Oh, man. Hmm. So, roughly for how long um, uh, has it been since I stopped working, so to say? So, it took about 20 minutes to walk here. Uh, not 20, it took about like 5 minutes to walk here. So, you know, it's been however long you want to waste trying to talk to the guy who's just going to ask you the same question over and over again. I mean... Light shows pretty stubborn, um, and but mm, he's also pretty tired at this point. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking here as well. Um, I am going to. Hmm. I am going to sit at this stub, 
uh, stump, I mean, uh, until the man decides to leave or I get the question correct. Uh, okay, so it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. After an hour, he's still kind of sitting there. Like, this is, like, his thing. Like, he's old and he doesn't work anymore kind of a thing. I'm going to be rolling my composure to see if I'm if more like, fuck this, I'm out of here. Or if I'm actually going to be staying anymore after the first hour. Sounds good. I'm pretty tired, though. Mm. Yeah, you're pretty tired. Much of these tests are enough for quite that. Yeah, so I know. Let's, uh, let's say you go home. Yeah. Okay, so you leave. Uh, you leave. He's as you leave. He says, "I come here every day. Feel free to come back when you have the answer to the question." Light shows just muttering beneath his breath, like this. Is my old man, crazy. Yeah, Light Show might be crazy soon, we'll see. So, you're going home? Yeah, I'm going home. I guess I'm taking Johnny Cam now since it's early in the morning. I mean, you can also just grid guide your car to pick you up, but yeah, either way. Yeah, uh, either both way. Both ways work, you get home one way or the other. So, I'm assuming you go to sleep? Yeah, I hit the bed again. Alright, so this time, you wake up, but when I say wake up, you obviously still sleeping. Uh, and you are in a nice fancy suit at a nice fancy gala uh, except you can't see the walls are kinda of fuzzy uh, there's a giant chandelier in the sky and there are a bunch of tables with hors d'oeuvres and such and a bunch of figures walking around some of them are fluxing but they all are they all have obvious shapes you can see just for instance you see one that looks like a man with shark like features then all of a sudden he grimaces changes into literally a man in a shark suit so like hold on a second oh we make uh, having picture, pictures and stuff yes So literally, you see something like this. <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely. It, it used to be a serious looking man. Uh, you actually notice that he, the band's accent changes when he does that. It actually, he starts to sound like he's talking in Australian accent a little bit. Uh, you see a bunch of other figures. There's also a dark foreboding shadowy corner of the room and there's several figures over there what do you do in this room clearly uh, as this is a dream or, or, or some sweet BTL ship uh, uh, light show is not entirely certain in the dream but he's going to be acting all fancy like uh, like in a way he's he's never going to be fancy like before and He's going to be walking around, like, sipping whatever they're drinking and, yeah, eating troll amounts of food. And he's going to look around to see if he finds this man with an old cane. Uh, or if he sees that shifting shadowy fe creature. That, you, you already hinted about it, but he's not going to just straight up walk up to him. He's going to look around to see what kinds of people he sees here first. Okay, I can describe. Well, obviously the people are shifting, so they're not. Yeah, I, 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 I will know. I describe know. one of their forms for each of them. There is a woman with whiskers coming out of her face. There is a shadowy cloaked man. There is your shark friend. Mm -hmm. There is what looks to be a Native American uh, warrior, typical like Mohawk warrior-looking guy. There is a rather large woman. Uh, which you can almost... She almost looks like she has fur. And she's eating almost as much as you. There is an uh, angry Viking-looking man. There's literally just a dog sitting in the corner somewhere. 
Uh, there's a regular looking man with not too many distinct features at this point in time. There's another Native American looking person holding a cloth to his nose. There's a man even larger than the woman before. There's another man. Uh, he almost looks uh, Polynesian and he's just sitting there. In next to you on the table, you see someone open up the not open up they flip up the oh, what's the word for that the menu the table skirt uh, whatever okay. it's called oh, I forget the name of it you know what I'm talking about right yeah yeah so that flips up a hand reaches out grabs the entire tray of the thing that you were trying to just get an hors d'oeuvre from and the entire tray just gets sneaked underneath the table uh. There's a man in his own little kiddie pool. And then there is an angry woman talking to a woman dressed in a snakeskin dress. Also talking to another Native American, but this time a woman, who is just looking around. Mm -hmm. And then in the corner you see one, two, three, four, five figures. Hmm. But they're off in the corner in the shadows. You can't tell necessarily what they look like just yet. Well, I didn't feel like there was anything hinting that this is something relevant to me, especially as there was no DJ or anything. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to be approaching the more shadowy figures that I'm not quite yet able to discern what they look like. Yep. Um, as you do that, the... Mohawk warrior and the man in the shark suit who changes back now that he's done doing whatever he was doing into a you know a typical man with shark like features uh, walk up to you and just grab you by the shoulder and be like friend you, you don't want to go over there and now that you're a bit closer you can kind of see into the dark corner uh, there's a man that is mutated beyond belief uh, a man that looks like he's diseased and dying a doomsay a uh, man looks just like a doomsayer uh, a man who just looks grotesque and he keeps trying to there's an order of their own little order table that they're not allowed to you know go see the other people's uh, and he's kind of like pouring chemicals onto the other people's foods and then the fifth one keeps trying to walk away from the table smiling and giggling it's a woman and she keeps getting bounced back. She can't leave that corner, essentially. Um, so Lightshow, as he just gets the hand from the shark, bro, he kind of just, like, the sharp turn you can do on your heel and goes, yeah, you're probably right. I should not be going that way because I have a fancier voice now that I'm in fancier getup. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Uh, the shark guy's going to say, yes, yes, that's very good. Oh, hold on a second. He's going to grimace again. He's going to transform once again to the man in the shark suit. Say, and he's going to start talking with Australian accent. And in front of him, you're going to see kind of like an image of an orc in a rundown part of town. And you're going to hear the shark, the shark looking man say, nah, nah, mate. Come on. Do I have to hold your hand again? Just, just do the right thing. Come on. Go, go fight somebody. Come on, you know how we do. And then he's going to... The image is going to disappear, and he's going to turn back into the shark-looking man, not the man in the shark suit. Uh, and then we'll escort you back to the group. Intentions? What the fuck, bro? Um, um, I, I want to know who, the, who this guy thinks he is. Uh... I mean, you get the intention that he is kind of looking out for that person in the in the image you saw, the like the glowy, magically looking image. So he asks me to go fight the guy in the image. No, no, no. He, he was clearly talking to the guy in the image when he was. Oh, talking. right, right, right. My oh shit, my bad, my bad. Yeah, he was clearly directing, and the the guy was looking around like as if he had a voice in his head. Um. And he was clearly being directed by the shark man, and all of the Australian voice was clearly directed at this man, this orc, uh, 
who looked just like a slab of meat, basically. But yeah. Huh. I totally get where this reference is coming from. I am very, very certain about this. But yeah, I'm not going to delve deeper into that. <clears throat> um. So yeah, I'm going to. Hmm. Uh, I I sure as hell don't want to approach that sugar uh, the corner with the scary mutated people. Um, mm -hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to remember if there's anything in this ballroom that is relevant to me right now. Um, I'm getting a good feeling that this is all just mentor spirits here, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, you are an adept. You have heard of those words before. Uh, give me a memory check. <laughs> oh, this going to be good. All of these <laughs> social stuff. Um, uh, here we go. Memory check is not. A, it's a. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I know, but composure, judge intentions, and memory. I mean, <laughs> it's not looking good. Yeah, you don't remember what a mentor spirit is. You just totally think these are cool guys who give mentoring advice to people, and they're somehow astral things. Yeah. <laughs> Regardless, these are some pretty cool cats. Or, I guess I shouldn't use the word cat so the shark man doesn't get offended. Yeah, um, yeah, he's gonna look over at the lady with the whiskers and then look back at you and then be like, You wanna go talk to her? She's kinda weird. <laughs> no, man, I'm, I think I'm cool. Uh, I don't know, I, I kinda just. Th this is so weird for me. Uh, shit, I did not expect this. Um, I mean, to be fair, this is an initiation for, like, a magical thingy-mabobber for, like, the least magically inclined, yet it's somehow exceptionally magical individual. So I had to, like, kind of make it that way somehow. But, um, in, back inside of the game, uh, because the shark man looked at her, the lady with the whiskers is going to start walking towards you, and then she is going to shift, she's going to put her hand on your shoulder and then shift, that all of a sudden she's not there anymore, but you feel a weight on your shoulder, and that weight is going to climb upon your head to where your horns are, and it's going to kind of, it kind of feels like it's, the weight is like shifting a little bit as if it's a cat on top of your head circling around while it finds its place to lie, and then it's going to settle. And then it's going to be like, and yeah, that's what happens. So now there's a a weight on your head and your horns area. I kind of like, um, I, I proceed to do, <laughs> I really want to begin raving here just to shake him, uh, her, uh, whatever it is on my head off of me. <laughs> you, you do notice the distinct and to your chagrin lack of uh, rave music in this fancy Place. Yeah, so I will not begin to <laughs> rave, but I am going to, like, begin trying to, like, pat myself on my shoulder and my head and, like, what the fuck is going on here? Yep, when you try to pat where, like, the, the physical thing is, uh, you're gonna notice the weight, because you can't see this on top of your head, right? You're gonna notice the weight shift uh, to your shoulder, and then as you, you know, try to chase it and keep smacking at it, it's just gonna keep playing with you, and just keep disappearing to other spots, until one time, it doesn't, and you find the neck of a cat, uh, but that is because in front of you, there has now opened up another one of those little mystic mirror -y things, and this time, it is a red-haired woman bearing down on a person, a man's, and this man is about to be shot, and then the person on top of your head is going to be like, No, no, darling, we've talked about this so many times before. You have to play with them first. You can't just shoot them. Uh, and then, of course, in the image, the uh, red-headed woman is going to scoff, say something derogatory, and then not shoot the man. And then the image is going to go away. And the woman who you now have, like, grasped by the neck, you now have her by the wrist, and she's standing in front of you, and somehow, from that, you're now shaking her hand. She's like, pleasure to meet you, darling. My name is Kat. Um, hel <clears throat> hello, Kat. I am 
and, and he kind of pauses for a second, and then he says, I am Lightcho. Nice to meet you, Lightcho. We're all so pleased to finally get to meet you. I see you've already met Mr. Shark and Mr. Wise Warrior here. Yeah, yeah. And it actually seems like you were trying to meet uh, our other friends in the corner. They don't play so well, nice with others. Especially that Doom one. He's kind of annoying. Oh, he's so negative. Eh, well. He needs to just learn how to have fun, but we're not going to teach him. Hmm. Ah, uh, shit, my phone's blowing up. Um, I'm going to be meeting right. this. Um, y y just to make sure so I'm not wrong here, <laughs> who is she referring to when she's saying the wise warrior? Is she referring to the Native American looking man? Yes, the Mohawk warrior looking man who is standing next to you, who is one of the two that helped you not go see, who at this point, even without the memory check that you failed, <laughs> I'm going to let you know that they're mentor spirits, and you were just walking towards like, I'm not sure if how out of character how much you're aware of the mentor spirits but there is like a subset of them that are like no good uh, yeah I think there's like pollution and chaos and disease and doom and such pollution mutation chaos disease and doom who are over in that corner being no good yeah yeah no I, I can totally see that uh, or I, yeah I can I um, found out about it at least um but yeah um Light show is just going to say, yeah, I do highly appreciate that you steered me away from that corner. Um, it seemed like a point of no return otherwise. We would never have, and the wise warrior is going to talk now, uh, we would never, of course, break our word or give it this courtesy, so obviously we couldn't allow you to travel over there. That would have been most discourteous. Um, as Kat says, you should probably go meet the rest of the people here. They all are very, and they all very much want to meet you, of course. Yeah, so, Light shows, like, since he's all fancy dressed up, he feels a tad naked because I'm not sure if I have my LED horns or the pattern on my back in this tuxedo or suit that I'm suddenly get up in, but I, I, I still feel very proper, but a tad naked, a tad naked. Yeah. So just to address that, um, the horns are your horns, like they're kind of attached to you. I'm pretty sure you gave up essence to get those, did you not? Yes, the LED, uh, the cyberware version that I picked, I gave up essence for, I'm afraid. Yeah, so they're they're totally like, they don't like separate from you. I mean, they're not, they're kind of malfunctioning a little bit because you're in clearly a magical realm and it's cyberware, but yeah. they, they're still there. And of course, because it's your distinctive style, of course your tuxedo still has the light show on the back. Mm-hmm. Not that, you know, these guys are going to remember you or that you're going to commit a crime. Well, I can't tell you you're not going to commit a crime. You might try to commit a crime here. Uh, we'll see. So, what do you do now that you know all of this information? Mm. I am, to begin with, going to introduce myself to everyone here. Okay, so there's like that whole list of people. If you Yeah. Um, don't break again, or we can just go down the list as I have it on my sheet, I guess. Yeah, sure, we can just go down the list, I guess. So, the first uh, person you're going to get introduced yourself to, because you're not going in any particular order, is the man, because you're trying to, you know, work your way from the... I don't know. You, you, you go and talk to the man in the cloak first. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And you walk over there, and he's going to be like, Oh, hello, Mr. Light Show. Oh, hold on a second. And then there's going to be a portal opening up in front of him, and a blonde man and a small dwarf are going to be in the cor in the image and he's gonna say and he's gonna turn to you and say this is gonna be good as he shifts into literally a raven who's just perched there and he's actually gonna perch on your horns because <laughs> that's okay. gonna happen uh and you're gonna watch in this image and the blonde men and the dwarf are going to they're going to jump this other man who is about to attack this redheaded girl you can see like the redheaded girl is walking down the street this guy's in an alley and uh, obviously going to jump her and mug her. So they're going to jump him. 
you're gonna see them grab him, tie him up. You're gonna watch as they put him in the trunk of a car, drive off to a bridge, and you know this takes a good five minutes. But then they get to the bridge and they're gonna toss him in the water from the top of the bridge, and then they're gonna laugh. And the raven perched on your shoulder is, or on your uh, horn, is gonna start laughing. <laughs> Light show is going to politely chuckle because it, it's still kind of awkward for him because he has a bird on his horn and the bird is laughing. Yep, I mean, crows do kind of do that. So uh, he's going to turn back and the image is going to disappear. He's going to turn back into a man. He's like, again, sorry for that, but, you know, have to do what we have to do. Uh, pleasure to meet you. You may call me Fiek Duv. Uh, sorry, just used to the... Irish, uh, in English, that is Raven. Mm. Uh, um, uh, hmm. I'm really. No, wait, that would be composure, never mind. Uh. Um, yeah, so... Uh, mm, yeah, uh, I'm going to say, oh, so you one of them birdies. Yep, one of them birdies, and he's going to chuckle a little bit. Well, you probably should go meet some of the other people now. Uh, at this point, you're going to walk over because you're just letting me pick because you don't have it written down or anything. You're going to walk over to the two large individuals, the lady with the almost like she has fur and the Polynesian man. They're going to introduce themselves as bear and mountain, respectively. Mm hmm and they're gonna start arguing with themselves among whether or not they should just, you know, stay there and t uh, and now I'm forgetting the word, stoically, or they should go berserk when their loved ones are threatened, but they're gonna be lost in their own argument and you can, you, you actually, what are you gonna do? They're, they're, they've kind of, they introduced stuff to you, but now they've gone and lost themselves in their own argument. Um, yeah, uh, light shows just going to, like, nod his head a little bit uh, as they begin, and he's going to slowly walk away, because he ain't got time for that. Um, m right. more or less, I'm suspecting this will go on until I've met a mentor spirit that I uh, agree with. No, not necessarily. You're just going to meet all of them. You're not going to... You know, you can do what you want, but you're not going to have to agree with any of them. You're not actually... This is a, you know, this is an initiation thing. There's not a gain a mentor thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no I, I get it. I get it. Um, I'm just asking for clarification here. Yep. Um, and we don't have to actually go through all of them if you don't want. I just wanted to kind of get the point across of what was kind of happening here. You definitely mm. meet all of them. Any of them that you actually, now that you know what you're meeting, you want to actually interact with any at all, you can. But yeah, that's basically after you meet all of them, you can you basically you're going to wake up, is what's happening here. Hmm. So if there's any particular ones you want to talk to, that's fine. Otherwise, you're going to meet all of them and you're going to wake up. Mm, I am going to choose to wake up because I was not prepared for this, so I've not actually looked at the mentor spirits uh, and uh, what their thing is, but but uh, I don't know. Uh, the um, mountain and the bear seems like cool cats. Or, I guess... Yeah, well this is not... You're, gonna get, you're not picking yeah, a mentor yeah, spirit. Yeah, I, 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 I know, I know, I know. Uh, not even but but I, I enjoyed the way you did it, so. Yep. Okay, so you're going to wake up. Uh, are you going to, you know, it's... You've actually, because you were so tired and did all of this, you've actually slept almost a whole day. Uh, it is actually about to be sunrise on the, the next day. What do you want to do? 
my first reaction is, oh fuck, did I miss my shift last night? Uh, I didn't have a shift, you're off. <laughs> so, like, the cold sweat <laughs> bead kind of comes down his cheek, and he goes, okay, uh, well... <clears throat> He thinks to himself, uh, well, at least I didn't fuck up work, so, hmm. Um, um, hmm. I think he's going to take a long, cold shower while thinking about what happened in his dream um, before he... Mm, he's going to do the same procedure as yesterday. Uh, or uh, yesterday before that, since I slept an entire day, where he is going to be heading to Soybucks whenever he woke up, grab a soy calf and a mm, soy nut, and he's just going to be sitting there eating it and sipping a soy calf um, while thinking of, about all the mentor spirits that, or uh, these magical beings, at least, that he obviously met in his dream, or perhaps he didn't dream, he's not entirely certain at this point, and he's clearly trying to figure out what that dark thing was now that he met the first time. Uh, make a memory check. All the good ones. Oh, shit! So you totally remember that, now that you remember that voice that was in your head, uh, with all those uh, voices was totally each individual voice you can actually pinpoint were all of the voices of the mentor spirits like they were all talking at once as if and you know like when they disagreed it was you know you could tell which ones were saying drink more for instance and which ones were saying don't drink so much hmm hmm I'm feeling kind of at loss here what to do, to be honest. Um, yep, make an audio perception check. Fair enough. Um, I'm fairly certain that's 5d6. Because the skill is E, yo. Failing perception checks. <laughs> uh. um, I'm, I'm going to be double checking just to make sure what I'm fairly certain it's... Yeah, it is. Oh, well. Oh boy! Oh, uh, you totally hear then somehow. What the hell? How did you do that? Um, yeah, you, you totally hear with that. Uh, there's an a troll and two other individuals. One's a human, one's an orc. In the corner of the soy bucks, uh, they're talking in whispers, and about... they're mentioning something about. Like, screw that old Jap geezer. Let's just go kill him. And they're gonna walk out, and they're gonna walk in a, dir a direction away from this place. Um. Hmm. Is it okay if I claim that I, I have. Uh uh, at least one of my melee weapons in my car. If so, I'm going to grid guide my car to the park I met the old man in. Yep, you can have your your beating stick in the uh, or and or your sledgehammer and your your melee weapons. All of them are basically in your trunk. I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. I am going to be. Also, you also know that you're far enough away that if they weren't, you could always just drive home and drive there because they're walking. Because you know they look poor. They don't have a shin young. Fair enough, I'm going to get home and get into my sh shit and then grab my uh, disco hammer uh, and make my way to the park because this old man might be crazy, but you don't pick on old men. Yep, so you're going to walk there uh, and you're going to come on them as they are about to attack the old man. They're kind of sneaking up on him. Uh, what do you do? Um... Clearly, as they are sneaking up on the old man, what I am doing is I am going to be blasting a full-on white light from my suit, and I'm going to be opening up the doors of my Shin Yung, and I am going to be randomly slabbing in the mixtape from 
the club last night, and I'm going to be blasting the music at full volume. <sighs> As I am going to be screaming, Leave the old man alone! As I'm standing on a hill with the music just blasting in my background, uh, I myself is making the light that shines around me. Yep, so the, uh, a couple things are going to happen. The first thing is that the old man is going to seemingly not notice this at all. He's going to just continue to meditate. Uh, he's not unconscious or anything, or any kind of like astral projecting or whatever you think he's doing. He's just meditating, but somehow totally sitting up, but just not caring or something. Um, Lecho doesn't understand the astral projection, projection stuff anyhow, so eh. Yeah, so he's just sitting there, uh, but the three guys are totally going to turn around and look at you. Uh, and they're going to start flourishing their weapons, and initiative's going to start. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Uh, I don't have any kami, so I'll... Oh, well. I have done better. Yeah, luckily for you, you notice that they went for their for inhalers in their pockets, but then they thought better of it and just decided to attack you. <laughs> yeah. I am fighting three people, correct? That is correct. Hmm. An orca troll and a man. Hmm. Do I want to spend the edge to go first? I mean, you can do that. You can also, I'll let you, you can still blitz if you want to. You just only rolled the extra three dice. Or two dice. Mm-hmm. Mm. Which would probably at least make you go first and definitely give you another pass. Yeah. Um, thank you for this. I am going to be blitzing, so here's the additional 2d6. Yeah. So that's Tw plus 24. five is 24. So you get another pass in there, and you get to go first. And you didn't even have to, you know, that worked out much better. Blitz, much better than go first. Yeah, well, I kind of ro rolled poorly as well, so yeah. Um, but regardless, um, so as I'm screaming on the top of the hill, as I see the three men approaching the old man, what I am going to do is I am going to... Um, uh, uh, what weapons did they brandish as they intended to attack the old man? <clears throat> so, the uh, troll has a sta uh, staff, the orc has a sledgehammer, and the man has a shotgun. Hmm. Clearly the troll and the orc are probably the most dangerous of the bunch. Um... Uh, yeah, and the troll is most likely going to be beating me in reach with his staff. Hmm. This his is a shame. Stick and hammer are better than shotgun somehow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. You should be afraid of a troll <laughs> with any melee weapon. Orcs, uh, for that matter, as well. Um, so, what I am going to do is I am going to be... Hmm... I kind of want to hit the... Now I am going to be charging the old man uh, regardless, so... I have a reach of two with this weapon. Uh, okay, and who are you charging? Uh, the man with the shotgun. Okay, I thought you said the old man for a second, I was going to be confused. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to whack the old man before they can and say, yeah, so... Your chamber sheet says you have a zero pool with that weapon. Um, I. Uh, it should say much different. Whatever. It's. It, I'm sure it's wrong. Because even if you had, you can still always default on it. So that's just. It's. It's just busted. Um, um, I'm going to have to look this up later. Um, hmm. Uh, anyhow. 
There we go. Um, um, I keep four of those. Okay. Huh? Um, yeah, somehow with that many dodge dice. Wait, did I overdo his dodge dice? Hold on. He has... I think you would take a penalty for, for my reach as well. Oh, what was the penalty for reach? Uh, well, it's the difference between his reach and mine. So uh, he's got a shotgun, you have a reach too, so that's two. Yeah. And then I think I, I did at least one too many, so let's just say that's three, because I misrolled that. Because there's, yeah. And the last, the last three were the... I didn't know I could move dice around, that's cool. <laughs> I was going to say, you are moving the dice around right now. Yeah, no, but they, they originally, their original configuration were, was that the, the three fives were at the end. So, uh, let's just say he got three hits. You get one net hit. I'm not going to waste the edge on this guy uh, not getting hit by you. He's just, yeah. Lovely. So, what he's going to be soaking then is 15p. Huh. Respectable. Am I rolling dice right? Uh, that is 15d6 to soak, so probably. No, no, I'm just making sure, because I've gotten, you know, that's 9 and 15. I got 6 in 12 before. Okay. I my mean, I don't like you today. Yeah, my, your table kind of has had a hard time against me, so yeah. Today, at least. Um, yeah, so... With that many soak, he is going to take some amount of damage. Yeah. So, yeah, bring it on. What are they doing? Well, I just got it. So you said 15p? Yeah, 15p. He's going to take six. So let's bring him some out of that. Um, okay. Uh... The man is going to fall the hell over, and he's going to spend his turn trying to get up. He gets up, but um, he doesn't do anything else. He spends his turn trying to get up. The orc is going to try to hit you with a sledgehammer. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like you have any suitable mood music for this, or...? Uh, I don't know how to use the music -y thing. Sorry. Fair enough. So he's gonna try to hit you with his, uh, hammer and presumably fail, but you still gotta roll your defense. Uh, yeah. Um... That should be 10, 11... I'm just double checking. I think I only have one rank in combat sense. Yeah, one rank. Yep. Yep, Woo. so Defender wins ties. It glances off your shoulder. Uh, but it's a troll shoulder, so... You know. Mm -hmm. Um... Then the troll specifically is gonna go. Mm, I'm going to be taking a minus one this time, I believe, due to his reach, because I think he has a reach of three with that. Yes, sir, you are correct. He has a reach one greater than yours is what, is what it yeah. comes down to. So... Actually, I messed that up. I need to roll two more dice. Hold on. This is going to be rough if he's going to be using the staff. Hmm. Nope. So that's what he's got. So I'm going to be rolling 9d6 for this unless I decide to... Yeah, I'm going to full defense. Who am I kidding? The late show does the full defense. Let's see now. I do the 7 and I'm going to be taking minus 2 for reach and previous attacks. 
plus yeah, so sixteen. Yeah, I'm nimble as a cat. Yep, so he is... That, that's gonna happen. I actually kind of was confused when he took Agile Defense on a troll, but that I guess makes sense. We do have high defense or something. Yeah, defense. I have seven agility, so yeah, Agile Defender felt like a reasonable thing. Yep, so the orc is gonna go uh, again, because now he gets to go first because of how changing of initiative happens. Mm hmm. He's only get two hits. I am going to be playing Beat It by Michael Jackson for the stream, or for anyone who's watching, just for some mood. Makes sense. MC Hammers can't touch this, it is also applicable, but. Oh shit, why didn't I think of that? Um, I still dodge. Yeah, um. So. Uh, show me the next roll as they continuously try to attack me when I'm defending the old sensei. Whew! He gets to keep a certain number of those, and in fact... Hold on a second. Yep, he does that, uh, using a point of GM edge to break the limit. <laughs> oh, I love this. Uh, I learned from my mistake last round. I realized that I could have, if you were, you were taping it, I could have killed Don. Or not killed, it was, you know, non-lethal ammo, but still. I could have actually hit Don if the one guy who fired a AK or whatever I was firing with, he, he had like 11 hits, but he could only keep five of them. So all I had to do was use a point of post-edge exploding dice to just give him the 11 hits, and she would have been on the floor. And then she couldn't have, like... Mind control things, but yeah, uh, roll your. Yeah, here we go. Dodging. Oh, five net hits from the. Is that the orc, the troll? That's the troll. Whew! This is going to be rough. Which presumably means you rolled one too many dice, but it was a one anyway. But that's fine. Mm, no, uh, I rolled fifteen last time and successive okay, attack. Good. I thought you, because you did, you asked. Oh, uh, right, yeah, actually, I have been rolling one too little the previous times. Oh, gotcha, okay. So, that's gonna be, how many net hits was that? Uh, that's five net hits. This is going to hurt. Oh, 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 Jesus. That's five net hits, and that's how that works. Yeah, that's a lot of damage to soak. Um, so, yeah, I am definitely going to be changing to some MC Hammer here. Um, so, yeah, my soak in this case would be 15, how 22. To, how many do you have to soak? Because you, you have your own sheet, and you're like, you know, have a different body than most of my characters. How many do you have to soak to not be automatically dead here? Um, let's see here. I have a fiscal track. Uh, this has been healed, so. Um, 3, 6, 9, 12. I need to soak at least 6 to still be standing. Oh, so you're, you're not gonna die outright from this. It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, I have a fairly large fiscal track. Yeah, you might just lose this combat, but you're not gonna die. So, good. Roll your, roll your dice. That's making me less unhappy about, like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, armor 15. Uh, body 7. 22d6. So, that, my brother. Oh, this is good. So, I'm going to be edging that. <laughs> uh. Yep. So yeah, I take eight. You take eight. Okay. Uh, presumably that uh, loses you at least like that loses like two initiative, right? Yeah. Uh, so off of you. Um, the man. Uh, and does that if you take eight? That's not more than your physical limit, is it? No, my physical limit is eleven. Yeah, you, you just don't go down because troll. Okay, you, you go down when you die, is 
what happens. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the man is going to try to use, uh, he sees that you're hurt, and he wants to just add insult to injury, so he's going to, oh wait a second, hold on a second, I totally forgot about this, yep, so before the man goes, um, you're going to see a flash of light, and you're going to feel lots of heat on your body. Oh shit, the mages, yo, oh no, the mages. Yep, and uh, what's gonna happen is those three are gonna be set on fire. And they're gonna run away screaming and on fire. <laughs> and, uh, so that means combat's over, because unless you wanna chase them down somehow and you're very, very hurt, uh, they're gonna go off and be on fire somewhere. Um, and you can make a perception check real quick, visual. One hit. Um, yeah, with one hit, you, you, there's no one here to have cast that fireball. The only people here are those three guys that ran away who obviously didn't fireball themselves. You, and at this point, you, you, you are thinking it might have been you, but it, out of character, it wasn't you. And, <laughs> Lightshow's going to claim it was him. And, you know, there's still the old man, just still, he hasn't moved. He's still doing his meditation as if nothing has happened and there's not been three guys screaming it on fire in his immediate vicinity but you see no one else hmm. um, did, did he ever shoot his shotgun he did not because you knocked him the hell over he stood up he tried to shoot a shotgun he was interrupted by being lit a fire all right yeah just double checking but so there was no loud noises to call the cops if that's i assume what you were looking for yes exactly uh, well except for, except for the uh, three people that might be screaming and on fire but yeah uh so yeah i'm going to be sitting down uh, on the stump i'm not going to be going into any meditative stance or anything i'm just going to say ah uh, you know some thank yous might be nice. Um, hello? Yep, I'm typing something real quick, hold on. Oh, right. So even with negative modifiers, um, the man is not gonna laugh at you. <laughs> Um, and he's just gonna sit there. He's gonna ask you, what is the name of that which calls you in the night? What is the name of that of which calls you in the night? Um, Light Show is going to ponder about this for a little bit, and then he's going to say with a very poetic tone in his voice, the music. The old man is going to again ask, what was it that called you in the night? I feel like I'm missing something major here. Uh, I feel like I'm not going to make you roll a memory check on the memory check you already aced, but if you do remember, um, you do definitely still remember that you were talking to these things called you the first night, and it was like that vector that kept changing form, and it was all the voices, and you remembered exactly what those voices were later. Oh, right. So, uh, I am going to say the mentor spirits, then, to him. Uh, at this, he's going to turn around, and he's actually going to take, like, a seated position on the stump. Like, you know, with his legs not, like, folded mm, over themselves. Not like Sensei on a mountaintop. Yeah, he's going to, like, actually, like, he's talking to you, like a person. 
And I'm assuming you're sitting on the, the troll stump? Yeah, I'm seating on the troll stump. I assume the other stump was taken, so yeah. Yeah, he, he totally didn't take the little... He totally didn't take the big stump. He left that for you because <laughs> you would break his stump if you took the little stump. Um, and he's be like, very good. You haven't found a mentor yet. And I'm not sure you ever will. But it is good to know what you're doing on these journeys. And then there's going to be a flash of light. And you're going to open your eyes and you're going to be in your bed. Still kind of hurt, but less hurt than you were before. Light is just going to be looking left and right. And then kind of like bang his hand uh, on something hard. Just make sure he's feeling it like he's actually awake. And then he's just going to be saying out loud, You know, that old man be real crazy. That old man be real crazy. Yep, so Mr. Miyagi is totally really crazy. But, uh, that ends the initiation. Consider yourself initiated. Lovely. Um, yeah, and so I'm going to be closing another stream now. Thanks for anyone who's actually watching.